is Research Computing and Engineering, uh, Episode 1 with Open MPI with George Basilica and Jeff Squires. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so starting off, exactly, most people listening to this are already familiar with research computing, but MPI, um, how would you describe MPI? MPI, it stands for the Message Passing Interface, and, and at its heart, it really is just that, you know, message passing. So you start up a bunch of uh, parallel processes together, and MPI is used to affect the inner process communication between them, right? So you, you're doing send and receive primitives and, and various other types of primitives, but it, at its heart, MPI is, you know, send this message from this process to that process, and the other process does the, the matching receive of it and so on. There are some, some uh, very handy things like collective operations as well. So you can do broadcasts and scatters and gathers and reductions and things like that. Um, but, but at its heart, it's really about communicating. So moving data and moving bytes from one process to another. It's rather amusing, actually. My wife laughs at me. She doesn't know why I have a job. She says, you know, all you're doing is moving bytes. How hard can that possibly be? Uh, but one of the, the, the challenging things about an MPI software implementation is that you really need to do it with very, very high performance. So, you know, you want to get the minimum latency and the maximum bandwidth and, and be very efficient in your memory usage and your I.O. resource usage and things like that. So all of these things get uh, factored into a very high quality MPI implementation so that we can deliver, you know, a, a very well performing middleware stack to the user who just really wants to compute and you know compute their fast Fourier transforms or whatever the the problem is that they're trying to solve in parallel would just want to be the tool in the middle that that just works and works very very well for them probably a lot of people who are listening who have never written a parallel program before with MPI are probably wondering communicating between systems, this is a solved problem. We have the internet, right? I mean, why, why would we need to redo this again? But MPI actually has a concept of what you're sending, right? You say, like, I'm sending 24 doubles to processor 2. And it's very simple. There's no opening a socket or anything. And it's also network agnostic, right? There's, there's going to be multiple types of networks here where a computer can communicate. Exactly. These are, you know, I get this question a lot. Why, why don't I just use sockets? Why, why do I need to use this MPI thing? And you highlighted some of these things already. There's no connection management. You don't need to, what's the IP address over there? What port is it listening on? Who knows? Who cares? You know, what if it's not even a, a, a TCP-based network that you're on? What if you're on shared memory or InfiniBand or Quadrix or Cray or, or something like that? You just want to send your data. You just want to send it and have the other guy receive it. And how it gets there, it's irrelevant. You just want it to get there fast um, and be able to do, you know, discrete messages. That's another advantage here. So sockets are streams, right? You have to loop over reading until you get the entire set of data and then assign, a, you know, assign structure to it so that you can interpret the message. Whereas with MPI, you send a discrete message. I'll send you four doubles in an int, and you're going to receive four doubles in an int. You don't have to loop over you know, uh, polling to get all of the data and things like that. And not only that, is it, it's a discrete message, but it's also typed, just like we said. It's four doubles and an int. So you can send a struct. You can send actual data structures you know, down across MPI. And however it gets there, it doesn't really matter. You're just sending the data and receiving the data, and all the, the network magic that has to happen in the middle just happens automatically for you. That's kind of one of the points of, of uh, why MPI exists. And we should probably point out quickly, too, this is a distributed memory parallel. Every one of these processors has their own discrete memory space. If your code calls malloc and there's nothing keeping them from uh, saying which rank is actually calling malloc, everybody called malloc, and they all have their own little memory space. So if I have some data as a CPU and I'm trying to give it to another one, I have to explicitly send it to it, and they have to actually explicitly receive it also, correct? That is correct. Excellent point here. It is, it's all explicit parallelism. So you explicitly send and you explicitly receive, and uh, you know, depending, you know, everything that you do, you have n copies of, of your application running, right? And this is, this is kind of one of the difficult things to wrap your head around for people who are new to parallel programming, that when you launch a parallel application, let's say you launch a 32-way a job or a 64 or 128-way job or something like that, 
one of the most common ways to do it, and there are other ways to do it, but one of the most common ways to do it is that you're really just launching 32 or 64 or 128 copies of the same executable. And so they're all running independently, but yet they know who they are. So a common paradigm is I launch all 64 copies of this executable, and the very first thing they do is figure out who am I. Oh, I'm number seven out of 64 and so that I know that my portion of the work is over here. You know, I go to the index number seven, and, and that's my assigned work over there and things like that. So this is one of the difficult things in wrapping your head around parallel computing is that you have all these independent agents running simultaneously. Sometimes they synchronize, sometimes they don't, and so on. So it's, uh, it's just a, a new way of thinking for those who are accustomed to programming in serial. Okay, so OpenMPI... Um under what sort of licensing is it available under? Can a uh, commercial application include it and use it? Um, or also, what type of network types does it support? Some MPI libraries either support Ethernet or InfiniBand. Um, you have to recompile to use a different network type. Um, is this an issue with OpenMPI or not? So you got you got two questions in there, and, and tell you what, I'll answer the, the license part here, and I'll defer the other part there to George. Um, the license that we use in OpenMPI is BSD, and I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, uh, but it is our, my understanding that you know that's one of the most permissive licenses that's out there. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who love GPL, and that's great, and GPL is good for a lot of different things. Um, but our goal in the OpenMPI community is to be as inclusive as possible. We want to include everybody. We want to include the users and the researchers and the academics and the vendors and you know the whole HPC community. And in order to do that, we had to get, you know, the least frightening license out there. And, and in our research and our lawyers told us that BSD is the one you want to go because that will be, you know, the most inclusive and people can do whatever they want. And basically, again, my understanding is all they have to do is cite our copyrights. But it encourages people to, to join us because they can literally do whatever they want with the source code to include re-releasing it under GPL if they wanted to. Um, but you know, our goal was that anybody can distribute this source code for free. Um, there is no source license. It doesn't prohibit somebody from doing value add and reselling OpenMPI. But you know, we wanted to set the license barrier as low as possible uh, to encourage uh, development and, and participation from all corners of the HPC community. So, do you know of actual uh, software vendors right now with a commercial? Uh, application that's actually shipping with OpenMPI as a supported distributed memory parallel system. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give a little bit of a weasel answer there. <laughs> um, well, actually, no. For for Sun, uh, OpenMPI is their MPI. Sun is uh, OpenMPI is cluster tools on uh, the Sun platforms, and so you know they have a whole team of engineers at Sun who work on OpenMPI and release it as part of their you know. Uh, high performance computing products and so on. Um, there are the, the weasel answer that I'm going to give is about ISVs who who use OpenMPI. There, I, I do know of a couple of them. Um, I don't really want to say their names, and this is the weasel part, mainly because I don't actually remember if they have released their products yet with OpenMPI or not. Um, and if they haven't released them yet, I, I certainly don't want to announce before they do. But uh, some of the reasons that OpenMPI is attractive for ISVs is that you know honestly it's free. Um, it's pretty production quality. It, it generally just works, and uh, you know it takes a hunk out of a price um, for what the ISVs resell their their software for. They can actually you know reduce their price a little bit rather than having to pay someone else for uh, a, uh, an MPI license. So from that perspective, it can be pretty uh, attractive to the ISVs. Okay, so they would probably want multiple network type support. So what sorts of network types does OpenMPI support? Do you have to recompile it to enable a different network type? Or is it like an Ethernet-only um, library? Um, so we support as a uh, name a network, and I'm pretty sure we have support. Or if we don't, we have it soon. Uh, right now, we support about 10 different networks. They are mostly targeted toward high-performance um, computing networks. So you will find InfiniBand, MiriNet, and so on. And uh, there are some other more um, um, exotic networks that we don't have right now, but the uh, support will be there in the in the near future. Uh, the other interesting thing is that you don't have to recompile everything. So you don't have to have multiple MPI uh, for one per network and so on.